students uh, and uh, trainer Dr. Liu Taiyu. My name is I. I'll be the moderator for today's training with the topic develop a good problem statement for research projects. This training is a part of Nusantara project and compulsory for all Nusantara project participants. Today we will have the expert on this field to share his knowledge with all of you. Before I start, I would like to explain the rules. First one is all online participants will be muted during the presentation. Second, all participants can put the background Zoom. And if you haven't received it, please ask in the chat room box and we will send the link. Uh, the third one is there will be a Q&A session after the trainer finish their presentation. And then the fourth one, I will have the authority to choose will, who will ask question or suggestions and the last one all participants must uh, ask question uh, not all uh, we will uh, choose which one who asked the question and we will unmute you now please welcome our trainer for today dr liu Yu. i will read your short profile oh, sure dr liu Yu is an associate professor at the Department of Management, Marketing, and Digital Business, Faculty of Business, Curtin, University, Malaysia. His areas of research interest are future of work, psychological capital, employee engagement, organizational commitment, job performance, and psychological well-being. He has been lecturing at Curtin, Malaysia since 2003. He holds a PhD in human resource development and has published over 30 journal articles in peer-reviewed journals such as Employee Relations, Sustainability, International Journal of Culture, Tourism and Hospitality Research, Asia-Pacific Journal of Marketing and Logistics, International Journal of Leisure and Tourism Marketing, Journal of Asia Business Studies, Sarawak Development Journal, and Bankers Journal Malaysia. Now, for Dr. Liu Yu, the time is yours. Okay, let me share my screen, yeah? Okay. Can you see my screen, everyone? Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Can't hear you. You are muted. Muted. You are muted. Okay. Can you, uh, I'm sorry. Can, can you see the screen, everyone? Yes. We can see the screen. You can you hear me yes. clearly. Yeah? Okay. I will start now. Yes. All right. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. It's actually now 11, 10 a.m. Malaysian time. So I'm sure it is uh, 10, 10 Jakarta time, right? Am I correct? Yes, sir. Uh? Okay. Uh, without further ado, uh, thanks for having me here uh, to share my experience uh, in terms of let me put into full screen first. Okay. Hold on. Huh? All right. You can see clearly better now, right? Yes, Dr. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm actually here to share my knowledge about how to write a good problem statement in uh, any paper or projects or, or any projects paper that you are writing because I have been the, <clears throat> actually I have been the uh, supervisor for many Nusantara projects. And one thing that I noticed is uh, the problem statement is not clearly stated. Okay, clearly. Huh? So that's why I think I, I have a duty to make sure this session is done to improve future Nusantara projects, huh? to make it better so that it's more publishable. Yeah? Okay, so um, so if you look at the uh, the screen, let me just clear off this uh, participant list just for long. Huh? Okay, never mind. So what is a problem statement? A problem statement is basically an overview of the issue. 
and describe the objective in performing the research. Where is this found? This is actually found in the abstract. So in the abstract, uh, you will find this problem statement. So in, in short, and also the introduction in any paper. So uh, what, what we are trying to tell you is, any research you do, the problem must be clear. There must be a problem and a real problem. What we are trying to say is uh, you should not uh, do a research just for the sake of doing it, but there's no real issue. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, I see, I notice most of the Nusantara projects uh, are actually talking about marketing issues, huh? like consumer behavior, for example. Uh, factors that predict, uh, predict purchase behavior, for example, purchasing behavior, okay? So in a particular context, let, let's talk about the issue of, uh, I'm giving examples when I explain so you can understand. Huh? For example, if you want to predict uh, the purchase intention of uh, young people, for example, uh, in buying things digitally online, for example, what, what actually entice them to actually buy things online? All right. Uh, so you will, you will look at, so you need to justify why this issue is so important. Huh? Okay. So you, you got to put your research problem in two words huh? and how you plan to answer the research question that you, you point out. That's very important. Okay. So highlight, highlight uh, the problem, what, what already has been known about the context. Like for example, you talk about example just now is uh, you want to investigate whether what are the factors that influence consumers of buying online instead of going instead of going uh, on site in the store, for example. So you need to tell why this problem is so important now, because now you know every economy is going uh, in the digital way, right? In the digital way. So you say uh, this will be uh, an important uh, business platform for the future. Yeah, so we, we, and then you cite any previous study that have done, that has been done about digi buying things digitally, for example. And why the, why the problem is so important is because uh, this will be the trend in the future where digital economy and digital platform will, will be a more important platform of buying things as compared to physical in the store, for example. You justify that way. It must be well justified, okay? And also, as I said, you need to describe the issue very precisely what you want to know. For example, as I said, factors influencing uh, uh, consumers buying online, for example, you want to know that. Yeah? And show the relevance of the problem. Why, why do we need to know it? Like just now I said, it's important to understand online buying, which is behavior, which is different from physical store buying behavior. Okay? And after you understand the issue, justify it is important, you set the objective of the research, what you want to find out, for example. Okay, this is where you set objective, you know, to identify the factors influencing uh, people buying online, for example. Yeah. And next objective is to what? To examine specific factor that you want, for example, the, the display of the products online, how attractive the product is. Uh, whether the website is informative or not, you know what I'm trying to say? So that kind of thing you need to highlight, huh? which is lacking in most of the proposal that I've seen. So going into uh, going into the particular uh, step huh, that you need to write for your problem statement, uh, for example, you say uh, step one, most importantly, is to contextualize the problem. Okay? What is the problem actually? Uh, why, why is it so serious? So you need to, as I said, what is already known about the problem? You cannot just straight away say, I want to study. Uh, this study is about uh, identifying or examining factors that influence online buying behavior. But you didn't tell me what has been done. So a good research should not repeat what others have done. Okay, you should have something new in your research. Huh? Okay, so and then we say is the problem limited to a certain time or period or geographical area? So uh, we want to see the extent of the problem. Is it only specific to, for example, Malaysia, Indonesia, or is it any way around the world the problem still stays the same? 
we want to know how, how serious the problem is. How has the problem been defined and debated in the literature? Yeah? Reading literature is very important. Huh? As I said, we do not want to repeat what others have been done, have been doing. Okay? Even if you repeat what others have been doing, you have to justify why. Huh? So structure to respond to research problems. So how others have responded to the, to the issue you want to highlight. For example, I have an example is like online buying behavior or anything, or for example, like uh, intention to visit Indonesia, for example. That is uh, something you want to predict, okay? So you need to tell what has been studied before and then what are their strengths and limitations, right? And then justify your responses, justify your objective. That's very important, huh? All this is lacking in most of the proposal I've seen so far, right? Okay, uh, the next step is, it doesn't move, huh? Okay, all right. So step two is about, step two is about show why the problem matters, huh? Okay, not all problems need to be investigated, okay? So you need to tell the reader why the problem is so important. And if solving the problem, how it advances the understanding of the topic. For example, like purchase behavior online, something very new that, that nobody else has done enough, for example. So uh, in every paper, you have such a thing called develop your arguments. Okay, your arguments. Why the argument is very important. Huh? So you can use this line of thinking that I give you, the underline there, called although, nevertheless, and because. Okay, why, why this line of thinking is so important is when you, when you structure your mind this way, huh? although, for example, like you will tell, you need to tell me what are you thinking about although, you know? So you're trying to tell me uh, what are the main themes of the problem that has been identified. For example, you talk about online buying behavior, for example, okay? What has been studied? What factors has been studied before? Okay? Uh, what, what marketers has been doing to actually motivate people to buy online, for example. What has been studied before? Yeah? So you must identify that. And nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, uh, nevertheless means even though a lot of things has been done uh, to study online buying behavior, however, uh, another word for nevertheless is however, okay? Uh, you want to ask further questions like, is the main themes and theories that has been used still valid now? in view of the any new evidence you have found, for example, yeah, or any new context, any new industry, for example, that you want to find out, okay? Because of the readings that you have and because of the your findings and all. So you must justify why there is still a need to do the research, okay? So which means you justify the research gaps and the theoretical gap, okay? That's very important. Even though this is more advanced for for masters and PhD, but it is still relevant for any project, even at the undergraduate level. Of course, you need to go, you don't have to go in detail, you know, in depth, but touch a bit or a little bit. Yeah? And if you're adventurous enough, you also may want to talk about or highlight the impact of your research to the society, for example. You know, what's the impact to industry, government, community? How, how does this uh, research benefit the industry, the government, and the community. Yeah? We, we do just do not want any research to be done just for the sake of doing it. What is the impact? You know? Okay. Uh, next one is on the novelty. Novelty. Yeah? As I said, every research must be perceived as new. You know, some it must be something new. So how do you justify um uh, how you justify whether uh, research is new, right? So new is very subjective, isn't it? So you, you can balance, as like I said, you can balance a few things. Whether the research can be new because the method is new. For example, you collect data through social media, for example. It could be a new approach that no one has done before. Or yours combining interview and survey, for example, something new in the method. And also uh, any new evidences you found in, in your research, which is different from others. 
and you explain why. Okay. Uh, uh, of course, I've seen uh, many proposals talk about relationship between X and Y, Y and Z, and so on. But you need to justify why are you examining the relationship, how it can help to improve understanding. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about the expectation of the. I, I'm sure this Musan Sara project is undergraduate level. That I understand, yeah. Uh, but you also need to know a little bit about the theory that you use. There must be theory, right? Yeah. And I'm sure uh, you know a little bit what is a theory, like theory of plan behavior, theory of reason action, yeah. All these theories, yeah. A theory explains the relationship between concepts X and Y, Y and Z. Yeah? So you need to know a little bit about theory and how your research actually contributes to theory, actually. Yeah? Contribute to the understanding of the theory. So this is how you can justify the novelty or the newness of your study. Yeah? So after everything has been done, you set your objectives. What you want to study, huh? for example, you say the aim of the study is to determine, uh, for example, determine factors that influence uh, consumers to buy online, for example. Yeah? The project aims to explore, maybe it's a new topic, you want to identify and explore the concepts. Okay? So I give you a template here. I give you a template here on how to write a problem statement. Okay, in a thesis or even a project paper, whatever. So sentence one, you can write about what do you already know? What do we already know? That's contextualize the problems. Lay the background, what has been done. Okay, about the problem. Anything you want to predict. Sentence two, what is the problem? Okay, after you give a bit of background, then you define what your thesis is going to address. Okay. For example, you talk about online uh, buying behavior. Okay, uh, they identify five factors, for example. Is your project paper is going to repeat all the five again or choose only two and three, for example? Yeah, because you think that two and three has not been uh, deeply examined by others. Like, for example, you talk about issues about service quality, for example, yeah, in, in a particular problem. So if I want to focus on service quality only in your research, let's say not, not just buying online, let's say about brand loyalty, for example. Okay. So you might think that service quality is very important to be investigated. So your project may, may only need, may only want to focus on service quality alone, but you must justify why. Because I've seen many projects, uh, they list, they try to be very ambitious and study everything, you know, not necessary to do that. Because if you do that, it, it loses impact of your study. Yeah? You do not know actually what you want to do. Sentence three, why does the problem matter? As I said, why the problem is so important for us to understand why? We need to justify that. Huh? So all the research projects I've seen, um, uh, they didn't justify the problem. They just identified the problem, say we want to study this. Not good enough. Okay. How are you going to prove it? That means how are you going to study the, find the answers to your problem? That's your methodology. Huh? Okay. Uh, the following slide, I don't think I want to highlight because this is more at the advanced PhD level, which is a bit too advanced for you. Uh, but simply said, I just want to highlight that, as I said, uh, in a simple way is uh, need to justify the problem. Okay. The phenomena you want to Predict, justify that why investigate that issue. And if you if you conduct the study in a particular context, for example, like Malaysia or Indonesia, you need to justify why Indonesia, why Malaysia, what can be learned, what is so unique about that context. Okay. All right. And then as I said, justify the variables and the constructs. Huh? Very important. Huh? And any other studies have examined the constructs in your study. Construct a concept, yeah? Okay? And, uh, and what is the limitation of your study and why are you doing it again? They all need to be highlighted. Okay? All right. Uh, mediator, this one I don't want. Uh -huh. I, this is too advanced for you. Okay, this is also a bit too advanced. 
So it is actually uh, not only telling me what you want to do, but how you're going to do it, that's your method, and also why you are doing it. Okay, this is more advanced for PhD, but I know you're undergraduate, huh? so I skip this. Uh, yeah, so the key point is you need to understand uh, why are you choosing a particular variables in your study? You need to justify that. Huh? Anything new in your study, the method and the concept and the theory, for example. Yeah. So uh, I think this slide is important for you. Uh, setting the hook. That means the what, what differentiates your study from the rest. Okay? I'll give more time for you to ask questions. Huh? So setting the hook, number one is who cares about your study? So you need to think about who cares about it, why, why your topic is so important and how is it interesting and important. So you might want to think about the trend <clears throat> on the recent changes in the workplace, for example, because my area is HRN. You need to reflect the, the most recent changes in the workplace. Like in my area, uh, we actually look at the trend of working for the future. Like people work digitally, people work anywhere, anyhow you know, anytime, yeah? So because of that, uh, factors that motivate employees to work could be different than before because there's an issue of trust, there's an issue of uh, integrity, there's an issue of uh, uh, collegiality, that kind of thing, you know, which is which might challenge the existing research finding that has been found, okay? And number two is what do we know? What? What has been known about your topic? What we don't know? What you want to know, but you cannot find the answers from the existing study and, and the so what thing. Why is it so important to uh, pursue the studies that you intend to pursue? Okay, Out of so many studies being done, after, after, out of so many concepts and variables, why are you choosing only two and three? Why, for example, out of five, for example, I right? said this now. Huh? Okay, next one, what we will learn from your research. How does your research fundamentally change uh, scholars' understanding or, or, or uh, industry understanding of your topic? Okay, all right. So the problem statement is actually a preview of your work's theoretical contribution. Yeah? So a good problem statement should not only just tell people there's a research gap, I want to do this. Because there's a gap, I want to do this. No. Yeah? You need to tell why filling this particular research gap is important and interesting. Eh? And how filling this gap contributes to enhance understanding of the particular phenomenon about the problem, or about the issue. For example, for example, employee loyalty is an important issue you know, uh, employee productivity or, or uh, consumers uh, purchasing behavior or consumer attitude or satisfaction or customer satisfaction. No? Why is it so important now? Right? Okay. So you need to position your question, your research question in the relevant literature. How does it sit in the existing body of knowledge? Okay. Yeah. All right. Discuss the contribution. All right, so I will stop here uh, for any questions you want to ask. That would be, I think, more useful rather than I keep talking. Yeah? I will put these slides there for you to uh, ask questions. Okay, yeah. I think this, this, you might want to practice a little bit and check your existing proposal, whether you follow this template or not. Back to you, Secretariat. Thank you very much, Dr. Liu, uh, for your presentation. Uh, so to develop a good problem statement for research projects, you have three steps, right? Right, uh, Dr. Liu, three main yeah. steps. Yes, yes. Yeah, which is the first one is to contextualize the problems. Second, show why it matters. And third is to set your aims and subjectives. Yes. Uh, mm. I do agree with uh, with your... I find this very insight, insightful because I used to be uh, involved in a research uh, project and 
Oh. When when I was still on college, and uh, my lecturers always told me to make a good problem statement because that is mm. the start of your research, right? And yes. mm. I find it sometimes uh kind of what uh I find this step sometimes it makes me stuck because uh mm. you have to research a lot uh yeah. about what to do and mm. your target research and everything about uh to make that good problem statement because uh there was this time when i used to <laughs> wrote a lot of <laughs> problem statements and no. then uh, my lecture said none of them are good let's uh, try it again that's right. <laughs> yes correct 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 but but most of the time lecturer will tell you this is not good enough that one not good enough but the thing is they didn't tell most often the like some lecturers didn't tell you how to improve, correct? Yeah? Yes. So because yes. of that, you 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 may end up spending a lot of time uh doing a research at the end of the day, uh you regretted what you have done, you should you could have done better. <laughs> so if you yeah. if you this, this step is really important in a sense because so that before you spend a lot of time and effort to do research, make sure you you know that there's an impact and then your research is so important. So when you spend so much time, it is worth doing it. That, that, that's the yes. best from my experience. Yes. yes. Uh, I feel it too, sir. <laughs> so I do hope, I do hope that uh, after this session, uh, what I mean, uh, we see better quality uh, proposal from Nusantara projects. Huh? Because I've been involved since last year until now, uh, I think after I've gone through a few semester, I think this session is uh, very important. Uh, uh, yeah, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. I do agree with uh with your statement about the on how to make a uh, good research, sir, because um I found that there are a lot of quite repetitive uh repetitive research uh mm. regarding the same uh problem and the yeah. same target and yes. it's always yes. like it seems too repetitive uh, uh, yeah it, because I you, do learn, hope that you the don't students... learn much from the so we do not want you to spend time a lot of effort and then at the end of the day mm -hmm. what you have done others have done it you know so yeah. it doesn't add to the yeah. this really doesn't add to the uh, the body of knowledge that you want to find out yeah mm. yes that is true all right Especially, uh, you're, you're also there's uh, you said this before that the research quantity isn't as important as the quality because it reduces yes. the the impact yeah. of the research. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think that's Excellent. also the consequences of having the repetitive uh, research. Yes. Yeah. Uh, At the end of the day, so you I can't hope have... that. Uh, yeah. hmm. True. 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 <laughs> yeah. Any questions <laughs> for the floor? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, if there's anyone who wants to ask to Dr. Liu Yu, please uh, use the feature, raise your hand, and we will uh, unmute you. Yes. Hmm. So anyone? many participants. Yeah. Yes, so many participants. Uh, there must be questions. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Someone better ask question before I point out. Oh, okay. There is a question, Dr. Mm -hmm. Liu, from uh, you want, you want me to check or the Miss... chat? Uh, yes, check but check? apparently they sent it on direct message to me. So I will oh, read it out for you. I, and then you got to read it to me. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so really... if we are talk in the middle of research for the problem can we move ahead or should we try to make a few changes in it and move once again for the research uh i don't quite get the question actually <laughs> okay Can maybe i should uh when okay. one researcher is mm. uh stuck in okay. the middle of uh researching for the problem uh, uh, do you think they uh, can move ahead or should they okay. try to make a few changes in it and move okay. once again for the research? 
Okay, very good question. Huh? This will depend on how deep your involvement has. That is why uh, when you do a, pursue a higher degree research, master's or PhD, there are a few milestones. The first milestone is proposal defense. Okay, where you present your problem statement, you prevent, present your proposal. So, so we would, the supervisor will check the problem statement, see whether it is uh, worthwhile to do it or not. And then if once the thesis committee has approved it, normally it will, you will go for your proposal defense. All right, you go for your proposal defense. Then after that, uh, after that, only you can, uh, after your milestone one has been approved, only after that you can proceed to collect the data, which means most of the time, if there's any feedback about your research, changes need to be done here and there. Uh, what will happen is you need to make the changes before you can collect data. So there is always a checking point, quality checkpoint uh, during the milestones. So no issue about that. Yeah. If you, if you are uh, enrolled in a formal HDR program, you have no issue about that. But if you are doing a personal, of course, every research will be supervised, right? At the undergraduate level. So the supervisor should actually play this role to check the work properly before you are uh, allowed or you, you can carry out to implement the research. Mm, that's my response. Yeah. Of course, if there's I... any problem, you should make changes before you continue. You should not. Yeah. Yes. That, that is my response. I hope it answers his or her questions. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that answers your question, Mr. or Ms. Gupta. Uh, you, there is you, another you question. Okay. Yeah. All right. There is another question, uh, Dr. Liu. Sure. Okay. Uh, Miss or Mr. Ritan, she wants to ask whether what is the differences between research and synopsis as the individual performs a research first time, they face this confusion. So they cannot differentiate what is research and what is synopsis. Okay. Research is the entire process of doing the, the work. Like for example, you start from conceptualizing the idea, write the problem statement, you know, and then set the objectives and implement the research, report the findings, and then the conclusion and so on. That is research. Synopsis is actually a word quite similar to abstract that you see in any article, correct? Yeah, so the abstract normally tells people about the background of your research. Basically, the whole problem statement is there. Okay, the, for example, you set the background of your research, justify why the research is so important, the issue is so important, then you set your objectives and tell people the method and what are your major findings and, and, and implication of the research. So basically, the synopsis should be written after you have completed the research. That is ideally. But sometimes you are also asked to write the abstract or the synopsis at the beginning of the research project. That's also possible. But that kind of abstract and synopsis is your research plan, actually. It's a research plan. But that research plan or that synopsis or abstract will be revised after you have carried out the research, know the findings. You, you should update the synopsis of the abstract after you have completed the study. Okay, I hope it answers uh, his or her question. Uh. Is that clear? With, yeah, uh, that was clear for me, uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, Mr. Ritesh will find it. I would prefer them to actually switch on their mic uh, and, and ask because, yeah, it's better that way. Yes. Uh, um, uh, Mr. or Ms. Ritesh, uh, can you please raise your hand so I can unmute you? Whether you have found that uh, clear no. enough or do you still yeah. have a question? No, yeah. good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, yeah. ma firstly, yeah. uh, I would like to do the thanks for your kind words that you have explained. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so firstly, I would like to do thanks uh, for your wonderful explanation and the words, the clarity you read, and uh, yes, my concept has been clear. Okay. Okay. You have any further questions you want to clarify? No, sir. Not at now. No. Ah, okay. Sure. <laughs> no problem. What is your area anyway? Sorry, sir. Your area, your 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 discipline. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My country. Okay. I'm from India. India, what, what area? I mean, your discipline, marketing or HR or whatever. Oh, What's your area? Yeah, area? my area will be human resource and management, HR. Ah, which is my area. You're from India. Yeah. You are now doing undergraduate there? No, sir. Masters? Yes, sir. You are doing masters now in HRM yes. area? Yes, sir. Ah, that's good. So you in which, which specific area of HRM? May I just ask? Um, which area of uh, sir? It's it's not been decided yet. I'm just. Oh. I'm just I deciding. See. Yes, sir. Okay, you're just about to start anyway. Isn't yes, it? sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, okay, You have my email just now in the beginning of the slide. Uh, okay. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure why it is not showing now. Uh. You can see the slide now. Can you see the slide now? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you can copy down my email address there. And uh, if, if you want to contact me, whatever, you know, when you maybe, maybe in the future, you want to pursue your PhD or whatever, after your, after your MPhil or you can, after your master's, you can contact me. Okay, yeah? sure. So I'm, sure. I'm very interested to supervise students, especially in the same area. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. You can, you can actually, you can actually text uh, the secretariat. I uh, can't yeah. remember your name though. Just now we yes. mentioned it was me, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sure, sir. Yeah, you contact them. You contact sure, them, sir. and then uh, you can get my contacts. Yeah, you can sure, just sir. email me. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, looking forward to to for your PhD further after you complete your masters. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, I'm looking for the PhD after my masters. Yes, because because we do uh, at Curtin Malaysia we do offer scholarships for okay. for good candidates. Yeah, okay. but make sure make sure you publish your work in a in in a journal because we are looking for candidates with uh with um. Uh, some publication and research track record. So make sure you publish your masters, and then yes. if your result is good, uh, I think India have no issue because the command of English is okay. Then you can yes. just uh, copy down. You copy down my email address yes. and my name. I actually based in Curtin, Malaysia, so you can contact me, send a proposal for PhD, and we will move from there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Even if your Thank university you. wants me to be the external supervisor, it also can be done, actually. Which university are you doing with? Sorry, sir? Which university are you enrolled with? Sir, Prestige Institute of Management and Research, India. Uh, Institute of Management. It's the yeah, IIT, right? Uh, no, this is not IT. It's a management university. Oh, management university. Okay. Yeah. You ask your supervisor if he he or she wants an external course supervisor uh, to supervise your work. You can uh, send an email to me. We can talk about it too. Yeah. Okay, no sure, problem. Sir. Sure, if you talk about HIM, I'm interested. <laughs> okay. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No, sir. No problem. Looking forward to get an email from you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure, sir. Hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ritanshi. There is another question, uh, yeah. Dr. Liu from sure. Yogita. I will okay. ask him to, to unmute. So yes, that will be better. Ask... Yeah. yeah, correct. That will be better. He said that there is a technical issue on his side, so no he would like the no question. Problem. You can type, you can type uh, the question in the chat, maybe. Yes. I can't uh, type. Maybe I, I can resend it. Yeah. Maybe I can resend it for you. Sure, no problem. I can't type, not sure why. <laughs>
That is the question, uh, Dr. Liu. I have sent it in the chat box. Okay, let me just have a look. Uh, is it how to actually that one? Ensure, yes, is it? That one. Okay. How to yes. actually ensure the novelty of the research? How to ensure the problem has not been addressed before at all? Ah, like what I mentioned just now is how you ensure the the novelty or contribution. Novelty means anything new about your research. That is a very, very important. Because as I said, we do not want the research to be repetitive, for example. Yeah. Um, um, do you have any specific context that you want to ask me? Can you type in the chat so that I can be more specific in my answer? I think that will be better, isn't it? Do you have any specific context that you want me to elaborate on? If you don't have that, I use my own example. <laughs> then you may not. Because I need to know his discipline area. Disciplinary area. Yeah. Okay. I think he has typed something, right? Is it? Ah, uh, yeah. What, what? Uh, Yogita? What is your area? And then, uh, uh, what, what is your... Uh, Behavior or something that you want to predict, for example. Okay, never mind. Then I'll give my own example. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's say, let's say you want to study about uh, students' choice of universities, for example, where they want to pursue their studies. Yeah. Okay. Of course, there are many factors that influence your choice of uh, which university you want to pursue your studies, correct? Yeah. For example, uh, then you search the literature, some factors that has been examined before, for example, like uh, reputation of the university, the ranking of the university, right? And also the uh, issues, uh, which is the, the, the country, for example, also affects your choice. Uh, maybe you want to look at uh, who are the lecturers, yeah, and also uh, any uh, newspaper, newspaper release about the about the university and perhaps the employer, employability of the graduates or any testimonial from the industry about the graduates from the university, for example. So let's say all these factors have been analyzed. Then you are thinking, you know, uh, all these factors include student choice for universities. What, what next for me? What do I want to know, for example? Yeah. Then, then uh, in order to just, I told you, in order to justify the newness, you need to know what problem you want to you want to find out. For example, if you still think that knowing students' choice of uh, how and why students choose universities, for example, you say the situation has changed. For example, so previous studies um, uh, sits in the context of. A university which deliver courses physically, for example, in the classroom. But we now know that a lot of courses are now done online, isn't it? Huh? For some even fully online. So you might want to study the same issue again, how students choose university online, but now in a, for online courses, not physical courses. So you see the whole problem now is different, isn't it? You may want to find out whether those factors that has been identified in the literature, those I listed just now, is still valid or not when students choose uh, uh, decide on which online courses they want to pursue, for example. This is totally new. Problem is new. Maybe the construct that you want to choose a few like just now, uh, which you think is relevant for the student to uh, which the student will consider when they choose which courses or university they want to pursue online, for example. And you justify why are you doing that? And how are you going to investigate that? You cannot just follow the same method because now students are online. So you might want to use social media or any online tools that you think can uh, help you or relevant, for example. And then you might also want to find out 
whether in this new context of students choosing university online, whether any studies has been done before. Maybe you think that it has not been done before, but when you search the literature, oh, there are so many studies has been done. You know what I'm trying to say? So that is my answer to, to uh, his or her question. Hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Liu. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that answers uh, Ms. or Mr. Yogita's question. Yeah. Uh, is there any more question from the students to Dr. Liu? Mm -hmm. You can raise your hand so uh, we can help unmute you. Or you can type your question in the chat box. Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll have a lot of time for another question or two. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. Students, this is your chance to ask questions directly to Dr. Liu that can help you with your research. You're correct, uh, yeah. Considering, uh -huh. yeah. Considering you're going to write a paper by the end of the project. So mm. you have to ask questions to make it easier for you to write your paper. Exactly. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yes. No question? This Maybe session I will is, this session is recorded. Uh, uh, call random Report. names. Uh. Excuse me, Dr. Liu. Uh, no, I'm saying this session is recorded, right? Yes. Uh, recorded. So you, you, can, you can actually, uh, I give you the permission to kind of like, share it with uh, maybe students who didn't attend this session or whatever yeah you can share the video yeah yes mm. yes uh actually we can share the recorded uh, the recording of this uh session later and mm. even upload it on youtube and send the link to everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, correct, correct yes exactly yes. Mm. maybe i will call out random names and see whether Mm, they're mm. going to ask questions <laughs> mm, oh okay mm, there is uh, someone who is raising their hand um okay miss ritanshi again okay yeah you can you can uh actually speak up it's better uh, so good morning sir i'm having sure. one more query so yeah. basically uh there are several researchers who are doing their research at first time so they basically they faces a lot of problems especially in choosing the topics. So how we can choose our topic for our research? Very good question. It depends Thanks. on your interests. Depends on your interests. First, first thing I always say when you do any research, you must like what you are doing. All right? You must like, especially for MPhil or Masters or PhD. More importantly, it must be a, you must be motivated to do what you are doing. Then, you look at the literature and find out whether it is an important issue or not. Because when you justify something, right, if you are doing a topic which your supervisor asks you to do, but you are not interested, how are you going to sustain that for two years, for master's and PhD for three years? No? So my answer to you is ask yourself, go deep inside yourself and ask what is my interest. Because you look at HRM, there are so many topics, right? To, to study, which one is your interest? Then later on, the second question you're gonna ask yourself is, why this interest of mine that you want to do is so important in, in view of the evidences we have found, you know, why this is so important? That's why I'm asking you just now, what is your interest? <laughs> this is my first question. There's so many, so many areas in HRM, uh, which area you want to investigate and why? That's my always my first question. Yeah. Do you have it a particular area now that in your mind you want to you want to know more about? Yeah. At this moment, do you have any particular area that you want to learn more about? Find out more? Yes, sir, definitely. Definitely, I'll find out it. Hmm. 
So at this moment, you are still undecided. No, at this okay. moment, I am not having any particular. Ah, okay. All right. Yes, yeah. Maybe you can discuss with your supervisor. Sure. But if 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 you are my student, I'll give you a lot of ideas. Huh? There's something <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> I will ask a lot of questions. Maybe you ask a supervisor first. And okay. if uh, you can search, actually you can search my background through Google search and check some of my publications and all that, see whether it interests you or not. If yes, then uh, you can, you, of course, you need to check the your university uh, guidelines, uh, whether they allow external supervisor to co-supervise your project. Yeah? Yeah, so let me know. Uh, let me. Sir, I'm having one more question that, uh, is there is any specific field in which the research consists wide risk of uh, come again, your question? Yeah, my question is uh, that is there any specific field where research consists of wider scope? Wider scope, okay. Yeah. So you are actually asking very specific topic already. So I give you one idea, as I told you. Uh, you can look at uh, uh, HRN practices in the new normal, for example. What's okay. the new normal now? Future of work. Because the way we work now is different compared to uh, what how we work before where everything is physical, you know, where you need to go to the office all the time. But now, especially among the knowledge workers, right, uh, we are working anytime, anyway, anyhow, isn't it? Yeah, knowledge workers, we work all the time, isn't it? There's not, uh, we, we are not fixed to working 8 to 5 p.m. Uh, some of us work at home and all we what we call as hybrid mode of working. Yeah. So when when you look at this mode of working, a lot of issues, as I said, uh, props up, which doesn't happen so much as compared to when you are physically in the office, for example, like issue about social isolation, for example. Workers who work from home, yes, they can perform their work, but sometimes they feel that they are very socially isolated from colleagues to talk to, for example. Yeah? And also they might think that they may not get enough support from the organization. And maybe they think that the supervisor do not trust them so much as if and whether they are working or not, isn't it? Yeah. And the issue of collegiality also may be difficult to difficult to uh, uh, kind of like um, uh, enhance because you are working online. If, of course, you can have online session like what we are having now. But do you think we can establish good collegiality by just talking online like that? Yes. Yeah, you see that? So this, this, this kind of issues, uh, you should examine. Because uh, most of my PhD students, they are working in this area now. And also on the uh, issues about you can... India, for example, is very good, yeah, famous for innovation, isn't it? innovative yeah. behavior, for example, creativity. So you might want to, one of my PhD students now is actually working on factors uh, which can uh, uh, explain the innovative work behavior of employees in the IT industry in Pakistan, for example. You know, so you can, you can also do that kind of thing that will carry you far. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Tanchi. Uh... I'm sure there was Ms. or Mr. Fanshika Jane who uh, raised. Uh, Slow minute, maybe. Okay. Just not I think I no problem. Their hand to. Yes. Okay, so my question is uh, first of all, good uh, greetings of the day. My question is, can you just please tell us about literature review, like how to like write a literature review or we can say mm -hmm. the research background because it's kind of difficult because we did our research from Wikipedia and online mode, but like how to write it up in our research paper. Okay. Uh, this, would, this would depend on whether you have access to the journals database at your university. Do, do you have that? access to journal database? Do, can you access that, for yeah, example, the Scopus database? The Sorry, come again? We have the access to the journals and all. Okay. Like, we, okay. Have, okay. Yeah, we have it. Sure. So how you go about it is like, um, 
Uh, may I know your area? Your area of focus? Uh, my area is, is HR and marketing. Ah, okay. So, so you are comfortable with HRM and, and marketing topics. So let, let me just give a HRM example. Like I told you, okay, let's yeah. say you want to investigate the phenomenon of interest is like, <clears throat> you want to predict employee loyalty, for example, or employee retention uh, in, in the context of the IT industry, for example. That, that is one you want to find out. So when you do the literature review, you have to give a big picture of what you want to study first. So you have to search the literature and find out in the context of IT industry, for example, IT professionals, what are the factors that will keep them in the job? For example, as you know, the turnover in the IT industry is very high, isn't it? They, they are not loyal to the particular organization. They are more loyal to their profession rather than their their, their, their job in the in the organization because they are creative people, you see. Yeah. So uh, you investigate what are the factors that organization can should consider to retain this employee. Okay. Then after that, uh, once you do, so your literature research should identify these major factors first because you need to know that. Yeah. And you need to know why those variables are being used or investigated previously. Then only you can decide, for example, uh, which variables you want to focus more uh, and do it again, rather than repeating the whole thing. Yeah, that, I think that's the, that answers your question, right? That's the first step. You are doing a master's uh, study, right? Or PhD? Uh, yes, I'm do, uh, doing master's from IMS Engineering College, India. Ah, okay. So master's, you need to go to do that level Business now. administration. MBA. Yeah. Yeah, you yes. need to. But the research component is not that heavy, isn't it? It's not the entire course. It's just maybe you need to do a dissertation to graduate, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, thank hmm. you, sir. No problem. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Panchika Jain. Uh, hopefully that was insightful to you and may help you in your research. Uh, we would like to welcome another question. If there's uh -huh. anyone who wants to ask, maybe they have problems with their uh, research, you can ask here and consult your problems to Dr. Liu. Yep. Hmm. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, as in, how can we make our research more appropriate, sir? As in, we all know that, sir, research is about collecting the information from different sources. So, sir, how can we arrange them in an accurate sequence so that it should depict a clear image of the problem? How you arrange the method, as you are saying? Uh, the met you're asking about data collection method, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, that what is the proper way to arrange all the information and all the things in a proper way so that it should depict a clear image of what we are oh, trying to say? That, that one, in the research. That, that issue can only be served, solved, okay, uh, after you define the problem. As I said, problem statement. Because yes, the problem statement will lead you to the research objective, correct? Yes, sir, yes. So once you have the research objective, then you only you think about the method. Mm. Because the method could be quantitative, could be qualitative, right? Interviews or, or, or through surveys, whatever. So you must think about whether those methods will provide you the answers to the research question and objective or not. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. So Thank the you. method should be consistent with the research objective and the, and the research questions. If you ask a question, for example, like what, what are the factors that influence uh, employees' retention in the IT industry, for example? If you ask a question of what, then it should be a qualitative approach through interviews uh, and, and so on to find out why. But if your question is about, if, you, if the area is already well established, you want to know, you want, you, you want to frame your research question to be how, for example, 
how HRM practices influence employee retention, for example, then you might need to use uh, quantitative analysis through survey method. It depends yes, on how what you want to find out. Yes, sir. So, sir, at first we have to define our question so that what is the basic exactly problem hmm. is okay, sir. Thank you, sir. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Faibab Singh, for your question. Uh, okay, I think we are near at the end of, of the session. If there is any more questions uh, that you would like to ask. Oh, oh hold on. Uh, Ms. Fanshika wants to ask more, apparently. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so my other question is, what are the like uh, steps to which our uh, paper get published? Like, what are the criteria on which our paper is selected to be published? <laughs> the criteria on uh, which our paper. That, that one is a uh, very uh, advanced questions. Okay, so for for papers to be published, the paper must be written in a scientific way. That's the that's the my first answer to you. Responding to the author guidelines. For the respective journals but of course as i said before you think about publication of the paper you must have as i go back to my topic again a good problem statement if the problem statement is very poorly written the paper will, will be rejected okay will be rejected so um the, if you ask me the criteria to get a paper published number one the problem must be clear what you want to study and why are you studying it Okay, and 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 the problem has a good impact to the academic community and also the industry, for example. Yeah, and it gives good contribution in terms of the theory and also practice. Yeah, and also follow a very scientific method in terms of uh, collecting the data, analyzing the data, and reporting the findings. Okay. So, and then uh, with a valid conclusion and discussion. So you can see uh, these are the main areas that you can, you can just download any journal articles for the journal that you want to target and normally follow the style of writing. That, that is normally uh, what, what we normally do. Hmm. Cannot be answered in, 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 in five minutes. <laughs> then why I need another session. Maybe, maybe the next session, uh, Secretariat, Maybe what I can do is how to publish, how to write a good paper and get it published. Maybe that's the next topic. <laughs> okay, sir. I just want to ask the brief about the selection process. That's it. Mm, can, Thank you. Can. No problem. Thank you. Sure. That's actually a nice idea, Dr. Liu. Maybe we should make that session next. <laughs> yeah, another one is like, another topic that I normally propose is like how mm. to enhance relationship between supervisor mm -hmm. and the candidate. That's very important because if you can't communicate if your supervisor can't handle him and also the supervisor can't handle the student well, nothing will work because master and PhD is, is a one-to-one a, a -to -one relationship, not like undergraduate, one lecturer teach 200 students. This one is very personal and very customized project. Mm. Managing rela supervisory relationship is very important. Then I will do that. You can propose a topic <laughs> for the next conference. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no we problem. shall not it down. Just, just contact me. <laughs> la, just contact me. La, yeah. Through Liam, yes. is it? Liam Michael, is it? The one the yes. person normally I contact. Liam. Yeah. Yes. 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 Liam. No issue about that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, especially any one of you, as I said, you want a supervisor to supervise your project, uh, let me know. You can even apply to Curtin to do your Masters and PhD. If you're interested, I'll give you more information. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Liu. I think that, that marks the end uh, of this session. Mm -hmm.